In today's video, we're going to talk about this mysterious Moderna patented sequence that also happens to be found inside the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So we're going to dis explain how is that possible? And we're going to talk about, in general, perhaps how this might have arose and why this particular sequence is so controversial to begin with. My name is Dr. Mikolai Rashek of Mara Genomics. Before we get started, I just want to let you know we have another COVID-19 Q&A coming up where people can uh, ask questions or provide information. If you want to attend for free, find out uh, at the end of the video how you can get free tickets for that. All right, so let's get started. So recently there was, not that long ago, there was a publication made that talked about that Moderna, the OVC company we all know about that is one of the big ones that have made mRNA vaccines, has patented a sequence which is, part of it is identical to a sequence that is found in uh, side the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This has third OVC controversy, as you can imagine. And this particular sequence also happens to be part of the furin cleavage site, which since its discovery inside the SARS-CoV-2, that particular sequence has been wrapped in mystery and controversy. So a lot of, a lot of conspiracy theories have been born on account of this sequence. First of all, why? So first of all, the furin cleavage site is typically never present in coronaviruses belonging to the same family of coronaviruses to which SARS-CoV-2 belongs. So this basically mysteriously, mysteriously showed up inside SARS-CoV-2. On top of that, recall I made a video not long ago that discussed that that same sequence also has fragments in it that are identical to one of the HIV viral proteins. And that also has stirred some controversy as to why that would be. And then finally, I also made recently a video that that same sequence might be a super antigen, meaning that it can act in overstimulation of our immune system and it mimics venom of uh, some animals, snakes, and that also has obviously created some controversy and conspiracy theories. And despite all of these unusual circumstances, on top of that, we also now discover that this same sequence has been patented by Moderna. Although there is a, there, there is a twist to it, so I have to explain this to you as well. So let's talk about the first what is this Moderna sequence? So the sequence that the Moderna has patented that is found in SARS-CoV-2, it's part of a, of a gene called MUTE-S homolog 3 or MSH3. Now this gene, when it naturally exists in our genomes, what does it do in our own body? It participates in recognizing mispairs in a DNA. So when DNA is being duplicated, for, uh, normally what happens, DNA, our genetic material is made out of double-stranded DNA. That double-stranded DNA has to be split apart and then each strand can be used as a template to generate new material. When a new material is being generated, sometimes you can have mismatches and MSH3 gene along with multiple other genes participate in a process called DNA mismatch repair and basically they find mismatches. So sometimes you could have a single nucleotide mismatch. Sometimes you can have bigger stretches of genetic sequence being mismatched. And, uh, and uh, MSH3 itself is uh, itself recognizes when you have a larger fragments of the genetic material being mismatched. So that's what it normally normally does. And mutations in these mismatch repair genes are especially found in colorectal cancers. So 
colorectal cancers are quite prone when mutations in these genes are, are occurring naturally in us. And approximately 15% of all colorectal cancers have mutations in these genes. So Moderna, how, how come Moderna was able to patent the sequence is because they generated the sequence, but they altered it, they mutated it so that the sequence still codes for exactly same protein as our own natural genetic material, but the genetic material is altered so that it is even better at functioning and more efficient at being produced, producing proteins than say what is naturally found in our body. Hence they, they patented, patented it. Now a frag part of that sequ sequence that is patented by Moderna, approximately nu 19 nucleotides is in the SARS-CoV-2 and it spends that furin, the controversial furin cleavage site. So what's happened there is that then this is what is so unusual is because that same sequence is the one that is mutated by Moderna. So it's very Moderna specific sequence, right? So how, how is that even possible? And it's a little bit even more bizarre in that it's not the actual Moderna patented sequence, it's the reverse of it. So what do I mean by that? Remember DNA is double-stranded. So when you have one sequence, the second strand is going to be identical to the first strand, but in reverse. This is why you can separate the two strands of the DNA and use both of them to create completely new genetic material that's identical to, to what you started with. That's, that's, the, prom, that's, that's the benefit of, of genetic material, that it's complementary. So then the sequence that is found in SARS-CoV-2 virus is the reverse of what Moderna has, has patented. So it's as if what were to happen is that mRNA of the patented Moderna sequence was created and it's that mRNA that somehow would have been incorporated into the into the genome of the virus. Now this could be coincidental, completely coincidental and yes it can happen. However authors were, cal were calculating that, that that coincidence because it spends 90 nucleotides would be so rare it would be practically impossible. And I think this is where that particular publication might have faced some criticism because extremely rare events, if they were supposed to just simply occur randomly, yes, indeed, they can be rare. But in nature, not everything is completely random because, of course, there's evolutionary pressure that can drive selection of specific mutations so that specific mutations might arrive more likely in, into existence and be maintained in existence than if it was just randomly. So that we need to take that into account, especially since this particular sequence might be involved in modulating the immune system. So that's why these authors face that criticism and indeed I believe some people on Twitter have mentioned that this super impossible sequence to arrive naturally has been found in other organisms. So yes, this could completely still be coincidental, but the authors went a little bit deeper and they proposed a mechanism of how this could have happened. So they mentioned that, that cells expressing this patented MSH3 gene could have, could have uh, been accidentally infected with SARS-CoV-2 and they, the authors claim, you know what, this actually could be very reasonable assumption. The reason why is because it's been known that cells that have malfunctioning DNA mismatch repair mechanism can be more prone to infection by viruses and this has been observed with influenza. So perhaps similar things happens with SARS-CoV-2. If you have a DNA mismatch repair mechanism that's, that's broken because one of those genes are mutated, then perhaps such cells might be more prone to in 
infection by SARS-CoV-2 virus. And at that point, what the authors mentioned is that what could happen is the mRNA produced from the mutated specific MSH3 gene patented by Moderna could have been accidentally used when generating a copy of the virus itself. So with the virus, remember viruses, they have to have genetic material, right? We know that, that makes sense. This genetic material can, can come in a form of RNA or DNA and the genetic material of viruses and so first of all DNA and RNA they're almost identical it's the same same genetic material with only the difference that one of the nucleotides used in RNA is slightly different than the ones used in DNA so DNA we divide DNA into nucleotides labeled as A, C, T and G and with RNA it's A, C, G and U instead of T so uridine instead of thymine and it's just because there's a tiny chemical alteration in in one of those chemical bases so that's the difference between dna and rna so they're practically identical and on top of the, that viruses can be either single stranded meaning there's just that one strand of genetic material or double stranded where both strands are present and so you can have a single stranded rna viruses you can have a double stranded RNA viruses, you can have a single-stranded DNA viruses, and you can have a double-stranded DNA viruses. And no DNA and RNA involved together. So with coronavirus, with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it's a single-stranded RNA genetic material of the virus. And that single strand of RNA is called positive strand. You, when the virus infects our cells, it has to be first duplicated. So you need to make it into a double-stranded RNA. So you need to produce what is then re referred to as the negative strand, the opposite of the positive. And this is where the authors propose perhaps what happened is the mRNA component of that mutated MSH3 gene made by Moderna could have been used to generate the negative strand and that's how it could have been incorporated accidentally into into the virus genome now that's if that were to be where you have cells expressing this type of mutation and that such cells were to be infected meaning this would have been accidental uh, generation of the virus in the lab so some sort of a lab synthetic uh, synthesis theory but again, natural production of this cannot be discounted. And the reason why, because you might be thinking, oh my goodness, how is this possible that this site that is so controversial could have arose naturally? How can it be so similar to the HIV protein virus? And on top of that is similar to a Moderna virus. Well, I actually think it is possible. And the reason why is because viruses do have to evolve to manipulate our immune systems because they have to be able to survive detection of the immune system and therefore different viruses could be using different tricks or similar tricks in order to achieve the same same outcome same same purpose and in this case perhaps viruses different viruses could have evolved similar sequences for similar purposes and that could be for example to manipulate our mismatch re our DNA mismatch repair if indeed it's true that altered DNA mismatch repair could help infection so you can see viruses can employ many different tricks in order to help them themselves infect hosts such as ourselves so I don't think this is a smoking gun of any kind but it is extremely curious that this has been observed in, in this particular setting where the same company that has patented sequence and they patented for anti-cancer purposes also has produced vaccine that, that by accident appears to have same sequence fragment in, in the virus that they produce vaccine against. So that, that's definitely an unusual, but it does not have to it does not have to insinuate that 
there is a relate relationship between the two at all so the reason why we made this video by the way is because this was selected by the audience in our poll and hence we wanted to complete the series on discussing the different unusual aspects of the furin cleavage site well if you stay with us till now then we want to remind you that we have a COVID q a event coming up so if you're interested in free tickets to this please subscribe to our newsletter and the first 10 people who subscribe will send you free tickets these are basically q a events where we answer we answer questions from ask uh, in on our youtube channel and then it's an open mic so anyone can ask questions and lately more and more frequently people also share their own discovery of information which is great we love it and then we also have another event coming up where me and two other experts financial well-being expert and mental health well-being expert got together to provide proactive well-being package for business owners who would want to deliver that to their employees to make sure that they have appropriate tools to basically take care of their own well-being from as many angles as possible hence the why three of us got together so if you're a business owner that would be interested in this again link to that will be in the description below just like the newsletter uh, subscription link and uh, hopefully you'll check it out so if you like this material hey give us a like share the video that's a big one obviously and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already leave a comment we try to get to as many of those as, as we can and uh, also finally I wanted to say thank you to everyone who has given us super thanks thank you for your financial contribution that obviously helps us uh, make these videos because all of that money goes only in the production of these videos because they're <laughs> this is not a solo solo work for sure so uh, thank you everyone and we're looking forward to seeing you next time bye everyone